Hello everyone, this is Goody K3NG. I'm going to show you how to make a Raspberry Pi satellite array control server. This will allow you to control your satellite array from anywhere in your shack, anywhere in your home, over an IP, wired or wireless network, or even remotely over the internet. This is my satellite array controller setup. It's a rather modest setup, I think. This is a standard Yaesu G5500 rotator controller. It controls both azimuth and elevation. In the backyard, I have a 440 cross-polarized antenna and a 2-meter cross-polarized antenna. This here is an Arduino, and it's running the K3NG Arduino rotator controller code. This is a little controller board that I built. I never got this unit into an enclosure. Maybe someday I will, but uh, too many projects going on and just never got around to it. Uh, this simply controls uh, left and right, up and down. On the board, you'll see four transistors here, and it interfaces with the Yezu rotator controller there via this blue cable, just a Cat5 cable, and there's a DIN connector on the back of the Yezu that uh, this controls the rotation with. This is a Raspberry Pi. I forget exactly which Pi this is. I think it's the second generation. It was sitting on my desk for months and months, uh, maybe even years, not getting any use, and I decided to put it to work. You don't need the latest and greatest Raspberry Pi for this project. Pretty much any Raspberry Pi will do because it doesn't really have to work that hard to do what we want it to do in this application. Here's a diagram that shows you how the system goes together. Over here on the right we have the rotator controller. In my setup this is the Yaesu G5500, but it can be pretty much any rotator that uh, you can interface to. I have an azimuth rotator and an elevation rotator. You can use this also in an azimuth only system as well. The Arduino is interfaced with the rotator controller via the I.O. pins. We're using four pins, clockwise, counterclockwise, up and down, to control the rotator controller. In my setup, I'm using transistors. In some setups, you may need to use relays. The Arduino is running the K3NG Arduino rotator controller software. The Arduino interfaces to the Raspberry Pi via its USB port. In my particular setup, I'm also using the USB port to power the Arduino. You may want to use the Arduino coaxial power connector and power your unit with 12 volts, especially if you're powering relays. The Raspberry Pi is running Hamlib, and in particular, it's running the rotator controller daemon. I'm going to show you in a little bit how to set that up. The rotator controller daemon speaks to the K3NG rotator controller via the USB port. It shows up as a serial port in the Raspberry Pi, and it sends Yezu GS232 commands to the Arduino. Rotator Control Daemon also listens on a TCP port, port 4533. It receives commands via the network on uh, at this IP address in my setup 192.168.1.252, port 4533. The Raspberry Pi is interfaced with the local area network. That can either be via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. And then on the network, I have my computer with control software. The control software talks via TCP IP to the Raspberry Pi to port 4533 to the rotator controller daemon. You can have multiple computers on your network interfacing with the server, although only one can interface at a time. I've extended this network out a little bit just to show a typical internet firewall router, whatever you want to call it, interfacing with the internet. You could theoretically take this TCP port 4533 and extend it out here via network address translation or, or port mappings and make it available on the WAN interface of your router. Naturally, you would want to take some safety precautions there and have some access control list and not have that open to the world. But theoretically, you could go over the internet, get to this port, and control this whole system pretty much anywhere in the world. Now let's look at the configuration in the Raspberry Pi. I'm logged into my Raspberry Pi. The package that you need to install on your Pi is libham lib2. And I also have 
lib ham lib utilities installed as well. I can't recall if that's required, but it might not be a bad idea to install that as well. I'm not going to go into great detail on how to install packages on your Raspberry Pi. You can use the GUI interface on most Raspberry Pi operating systems. I prefer to use the command line interface, and I use app install and uh, Hamlet 2. I'll do it like that. And that's normally what it would look like. And th this tells me that I already have lib, hamlib2 already installed. The daemon or software that you need to have running on here to make this whole thing work is rotator control daemon, R-O-T-C-T-L-D. Look at the man page here. This goes through the command line parameters and what the commands are if you telnet right into port 4533. We'll do that in a little bit for some testing. So you need to have rotator control daemon running all the time. I have it running in an RC script. I have it in Etsy, rc.local. If you look down in the description of this video, you'll see a link to GitHub where I have this file posted. But it's pretty simple. This is just a bash shell script. I log to syslog here that we're starting, rotator control daemon. I check here if this serial port is available, TTYACM0. If that serial port is available, or it exists, I should say, we launch rotator control daemon and we specify that as the port right here. Now, there are some instances on my system where if I reboot the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino is plugged in, it may show up on dev TTY ACM1. So that's why I check. I see if this TTY exists. If it does, I use that. If it doesn't exist, then I just make the assumption that it's ACM1. It doesn't appear to go to ACM2, 3, 4. It just seems to hop between these two. I don't know why. That's just the way it is. I don't think that's a new issue with Linux. I've seen that many years in the past where inserting USB devices may be enumerated differently and show up as uh, different devices. The other command line parameters here, I'll explain the M601, that's uh, Yezu GS232 protocol. The T4533, that's the TCP port that the rotator control daemon will listen to. And S is the serial port speed. It'll talk via TTY ACM0 to the Arduino at 9600 baud. This ampersand means put it in the background. So this script will run initially when we boot up the Raspberry Pi. It'll start rotator control daemon with either one of these here and the script will exit, but the daemon will continue to live on after the script has done executing. And if we look here, I'll just uh, show you that uh, you can see this running on my system. And this is it right here. It's running right now, and it's process ID 652. Now let's do a little test to see if the rotator control daemon is working on our Raspberry Pi. I'm on a computer on my local area network. I'm going to telnet to the Raspberry Pi port 4533. We connect to it. It doesn't come back with any message or anything, but we do know that we're connected to it right now. If you do a lowercase p command, that will report the current azimuth and elevation. You can command the unit to move by using a capital P, and we'll just plug in, let's say, azimuth of 100 and an elevation of 45, and the rotator controller has initiated rotation, and if I continue to do small p's, you'll see that uh, rotation is occurring. There's other commands for the rotator controller daemon. Again, if you go into the man page of ROTCTLD, you'll be able to see what those commands are. But we've just verified here that the Raspberry Pi is connected to the network. The daemon is listing on port 4533, so we know that we're going to be able to connect to it with programs on the network here. Let's look briefly at the configuration of the K3NG Arduino rotator controller. I'm in the rotator features file. You will need to uncomment feature Yezu emulation. And because we selected 601 as the protocol and the rotator control daemon, that corresponds with Yezu GS232 
232A emulation, not B. So you'll need to go to this line here that says Option GS 232B emulation and make sure that's commented out. So the unit, the Arduino, will be talking GS 232A with the rotator control daemon. I'm not going to go into detail on other configuration options. I have other videos here in my channel that you can view to get more detail on the various features and options for the Arduino rotator controller. Finally, let's look at a control program and how we interface it over the network to the Raspberry Pi running the rotator control daemon. I have running here on my Mac GPredict. I've used this program for years. It's cross-platform. It runs on uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, just about anything. It's a really good program. To configure this, you go to Edit, Preferences, Interfaces, Rotators. And here you see my satellite array. We'll go into the details. In this program, you have to give it a name. Host is just the IP address. That's the Raspberry Pi.252. And then the TCP port, which you should be familiar with by now, 4533. Uh, there's some other configuration items here. My particular rotation system starts at 0 degrees north and rotates through to 18360. It has uh, 90 degrees of overlap, so maximum elevation, or I'm sorry, maximum azimuth is 450 degrees, and I can rotate full zero to 180 on my array. And I'll hit OK, and I'll go to antenna control. And in GPredict, you'll, you'll see the satellite array that I created. You click Engage, and now it's talking over the network, and you can see rotation in progress here. And the next satellite that's going to be coming into view here at my location at the moment is the Max Valier Sat. I'll tell it to track. And this is the current position of the antenna array. This is where the control program wants to get it to. So what we have going on right now, this program is talking over the network via TCP to the Raspberry Pi on port 4533. It's giving it hamlib commands. And the Raspberry Pi is then sending Yezu GS232A commands to the Arduino, and the Arduino is controlling my Yezu rotator control unit. Other programs may do this a bit differently, but you'll probably see the same concepts of defining the unit over the network, and most of the settings will likely be the same and the concepts are the same. I hope this video helps you out. If you need additional help and support, I encourage you to join the Radio Artisan Group's IO group. 73.